From rite of passage to medical intervention, in Western Kenya, circumcision has never been so popular. Josiah is one of more than 20,000 men who've had the operation since a new health campaign started in November last year. It's all driven by compelling new evidence which suggests being circumcised can cut the risk of catching HIV by up to 60%. So when we circumcise somebody, we also remove a big part of the inner mucosa, thereby reducing this number of cells which can attract HIV virus during sexual intercourse. In many parts of Kenya, circumcision has been a part of tribal tradition for generations. But here in the West, the predominant tribe is Luo, who don't historically practice the procedure. Doctors at clinics like this one are very aware that this province has the lowest proportion of circumcised men and the highest proportion of HIV. Now Luos are being encouraged to break with tradition, both by health workers and by potential partners. Most of my friends who have been circumcised are still very sexually active and they say that women prefer men like that, partly because it's more hygienic and also because they say it's easier to use a condom. The problem, say experts, is information. Some men see circumcision as giving them virtual immunity to AIDS and end up having more unsafe sex than ever. Really there is uh, that element that those who are circumcised then sort of uh, 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 take away all their breaks and uh, think that they are immune and engaging and protected uh, uh, sexual behaviours. Uh, so circumcision is not the in thing, in other words that uh, it is going to solve our HIV problem alone. Kenya's doctors insist that all patients are getting good advice as well as the operation. They stress it's no magic bullet, but results from this province suggest that circumcision could play a major part in Africa's ongoing fight against AIDS. <laughs>